That's how you find things in an organization. I talked about the second right answer earlier. And this is just a discipline. When you're, you know, we want to, you know, chop off our to-do list every day. And it feels so good to just check them off and check them off and check them off. And usually when you do that, you are solving problems the obvious way, the simplest way. Usually the least creative way. If you can start practicing saying, wait a minute, time out. Is there another solution? You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed because there almost always is. I was doing work for Shell Oil a number of years ago, back when they still had full serve gas. Anybody remember that? Well, they used to have people come out and actually put the gas in your tank, okay? And they would charge extra for it. Shell Oil wanted to increase the full serve business because it's more profitable. So they called a consultant in and said, how do we get these kids to develop a relationship with the customer? You're not. These are 16, 17 year old kids are there less than six months. They don't care about relationships with the customer. They said, we just wanted to remember the customer's name. 99% of full serve customers use a credit card. So we've got their name. So all we had to train them to do is when they get the credit card, look at the name and greet the customer by name and then remember it. I said, oh, I don't know. So how are we going to do that? I said, well, we can send them to training uh, for memory, you know, memory training. I said, are you kidding me? How much it would cost? And every six months we got a whole bunch of new kids. I said, well, is anybody doing it yet? And there was a kid up in New England who only had to see the credit card one time and he never had to see it again. And he would go straight to the gas cap and say, good morning, Mrs. Jones, how are you? And then go get the credit card. And I said, well, how's he do it? So I went up to find out. When the, first, when the customer come, comes in and gives him a credit card, he gets a piece of masking tape, writes the name on a piece of masking tape, and sticks it on the gas cap. Yeah. <laughs> customer will never see it. They never pump their own gas. So he goes straight to the gas cap, says, good morning, Mrs. Jones. How are you today? And he gets the credit card, and they just think he's a genius for the cost of a roll of masking tape. All right? That's a second right answer. That's a second right answer. Second right answer. Dominoes, when they first started to hit the market years ago, the first thing they learned was that back then, not today anymore, but back then the number one source of new business for a pizza shop was the Yellow Pages. Remember those? It was a book. Yeah. <laughs> and the first thing they did was they bought a big color ad in the Yellow Pages. It just dominated the, the Yellow Pages because everybody else was a mom and pop pizza shop. They had just a little one line ad. So they went to this one market and splashed their ad in the yellow pages and said, you know, here we are. Well, there was a little mom and pop pizza shop and they couldn't afford an ad like that. So they had to come up with a second answer. So they ran a promotion. Bring us the Domino's ad out of the yellow pages and get two pizzas for the price of one. <laughs> People were ripping them out of phone booths and everything. And then it became a media storm because it was like a David and Goliath story. So they not only increased their business, but they got rid of all the Domino's ads. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Second right answer. There's tons of those. Breaking the mold. This I used to use a lot in healthcare, and it means changing the experience. And you can think about that at CMU. These students don't come here just for an education. They can get an education in a lot of different places. It's also an experience. Think about their first impression when they first come here, whether it's for new student orientation or whatever it might be. What could we do to really wow them? Not money, okay? The simplest thing I remember doing was in a doctor's office or a dentist's office. You could be blind and know you're in a medical office because they all smell alike, right? Yeah. It's like, okay. Popcorn in the, in the waiting area. Simple thing. You walk into a dentist's office or a doctor's office and you smell popcorn, you instantly feel festive, right? You don't even have to eat the stuff. Just, hmm. It's a little thing, just a little thing. Think about all the different moments of truth in your students' experiences and how you could break the mold. Shock them. Shock them in a positive way. Worst case, this is fun. You know, we, we sit around, we brainstorm how we can improve, you know, our, our operations in our student relations and our whatever it might be. Get a flip chart. Remember one of those? A piece of paper? <laughs> marker? And you write uh, like a T chart and you say worst. And you say 
what's the worst we could screw up? How can we really blow it? Well, we wouldn't answer the phone. We tell students, you know, we'll get back to you whenever. Uh, you would just, everything you could do possibly wrong, you, you list it. And it's fun. It's more fun to list how you could screw up, right? And then you say, what's the opposite of that? And you can come up with a whole lot better improvements for whatever it is you're analyzing when you start off on the worst side and say, wow, we're all actually doing some of that stuff, right? And then you do the opposite. Okay, I'm going to go quickly here because these are, again, more for organizations. Five whys is a root cause analysis process. Whenever you're trying to solve a problem, you say, well, why does it exist? For example, I always love it when companies call in and say, we have a morale problem. We think we should have a picnic. <laughs> okay, then what? Okay, I'll drink your beer and I'll ride the rides, but I'm still ticked off tomorrow. <laughs> First you say, well, why do you have a morale problem? Well, we don't really know. It could be our management. Well, why is it your man? Well, they really aren't engaged with the, with the employee. Well, why aren't they? Well, they aren't really rewarded for that. Well, why aren't they rewarded for that? Well, because they aren't measured on that performance review. Well, why aren't they measured on that performance And you just go, why, 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 why? And you get to the root cause, and it's not a picnic. It's not a picnic. <laughs> Blow it all up. This is Einstein. Every act of creation is, first of all, an act of destruction. Kind of, I think that way, and I don't know why. But whenever I do organizational development stuff, I say, suppose the Department of Engineering, and this is kind of morose, but just go with me on this. Suppose it was bombed tomorrow, or it caught fire, and everybody was killed, everything disappeared. It's just, it's just ground zero. And then you get your insurance check and it's time to rebuild, what's it going to look like? Exactly the way it did before? Same exact people, same exact job, same exact building, same exact equipment? I don't think so. It's so much easier to blow it all up mentally and then rebuild it mentally than it is to go, well, you know what, I think we could probably change the lights in here. Uh, you know, the retrofit. It's just another mental technique. Every act of creation is, first of all, an act of destruction.